Hello and welcome to the second video in the A-Level Biology series. Today we are going to be talking about transport in plants. Plants do not have blood vessels like us. Instead, they successfully transport water, sugars and amino acids to key tissues and cells within the plant through networks of specialised tubular tissues called the xylem and the phloem. The xylem tissue transports water and mineral ions up against gravity from the roots and into the leaves of the plant. The phloem tissue transport organic substances like sugars and dissolved amino acids up and down the plant. Both tissue types are made up of highly specialised cells and are arranged in a way which helps give the plant as much strength and structure as possible. Water and mineral ions are transported upwards against gravity from the roots to the rest of the plant. The xylem consists of dead cells which contain no nucleus, organelles and cytoplasm, allowing for more room for water transport. Xylem cells have no end-to-end -end cell wall. Xylem cells are stacked on top of each other to form one continuous tube and the cell walls of the xylem are pitted, allowing the exchange of water and minerals in and out of the cell. The cell wall of xylem cells contain lignin, which is a tough woody substance. It strengthens and provides structure and support to the plant, like our spines, keeping us upright and steady. Flowing vessels are involved in the transport of dissolved organic substances such as sucrose and amino acids from where they are made, known as sources. For example, leaves, buds, flowers and fruits can be considered sources. The roots and the bulbs of the plant act as a sink, as this is where the sugars are stored. Phloem vessels consist of two types of cells. Sieve tube elements. These are living vessels with no nucleus, no organelles and a little cytoplasm. These cells join end to end to form the sieve tube element. The end plate of the sieve cell walls are perforated to allow the passage of solutes from cell to cell. Companion cells are required to help the sieve tube element cells to survive. Companion cells sit adjacent to the sieve tube elements and they contain a nucleus and lots of mitochondria. The sieve tube elements and the companion cells are connected via plasmodesmata, which are channels within the cell wall of the sieve tube cells which allow the two cells to communicate. The xylem and phloem are grouped together to form vascular bundles when water and sugars are transported from one part of the plant to another whilst also providing the plant with structural integrity. Sclerenchyma cells are also found in vascular bundles of the stem and provide structural integrity to the stem. Sclerenchyma cells are dead cells with thickened cell walls containing lignin, which makes them rigid and inflexible. This provides a sturdy support to the plant. This is why plants can grow very tall and withstand moderate windy conditions without falling over. The vascular bundles are arranged differently depending on which part of the plant they are found. So firstly in the stem. Xylem cells lie in the innermost part of the stem, providing an internal structural support. Sclerenchyma cells are found in the outermost part within the bundle and the phloem vessels sit in the middle of the two cell types. In the root, the xylem vessels form a cross-like structure in the centre and is surrounded by phloem vessels. This arrangement is important for providing strength to the root as it is pushed through the soil. And in the leaf, the xylem vessels are found at the top and the phloem vessels below. So now on to water transport in plants. So plants require water for two major reasons. Number one, photosynthesis, the process by which plants produce their own food, your glucose, from water and carbon dioxide and sunlight. Two, mineral transport, which is important for cellular survival such as amino acid production, protein synthesis and immunity. Water enters the plant through the roots and is transported through the xylem vessels to the leaves where it is used for photosynthesis and transpires into the air. Water enters the plant through root hairs, which are specialised cells on the smallest parts of the roots. These root hairs create a large surface area for the uptake of water by osmosis from soil to root cells. Water moves from cell to cell within the root cortex by osmosis down a concentration gradient. 
This is from high to low concentration of solute. At the centre of the route, water enters the xylem vessels. After travelling up the xylem to the leaves, the water moves from cell to cell to the mesophyll cells, where it is used for photosynthesis. Some water diffuses into the surrounding air spaces in the leaf, then diffuses into the air via the stomata, which are small pores on the surface of the leaf. This process is called transpiration and is a key process in driving the transport of water through the xylem. The rate of transpiration is depending on key environmental conditions such as wind speed, humidity, temperature and surface area of the leaf. The most widely accepted theory to explain the movement of water upwards in the xylem against the force of gravity is called the cohesion tension theory. Water molecules are polar molecules because they have both positive and negative poles. The hydrogen atom has a slightly positive charge and the oxygen atom has a slightly negative charge. The attraction between the positive hydrogen and the negative oxygen results in hydrogen bond formation between the hydrogen of one water molecule and the oxygen of another water molecule. This attractive force is known as cohesion and results in surface tension in water. This cohesion pulls water from the roots, through the xylem and to the leaves. Water molecules are lost constantly from the leaf cells due to transpiration. The loss of one molecule results in another being pulled along by cohesion and tension. This is like an endless queue. When the water molecule at the front of the queue leaves, i.e. is lost during transpiration, another water molecule joins the back of the queue to replace it. With all of these molecules being held together by hydrogen bonds. Transpiration creates tension, or differential pressure, in the cell walls of mesophyll cells. Water evaporates out of the mesophyll cells, leading to a lower water potential in the cells than in the xylem. Water then moves from an area of high water potential in the xylem to an area of low water potential in the mesophyll. So, you have cohesion because the ions in the water molecules form bonds between each other, linking all molecules together. And then tension is what drives that cue upwards from the roots towards the leaves. The loss of water by transpiration in the leaves creates a negative pressure which induces the rest of the cue to move up. So now onto sugar and substance transport in plants. Sugars and dissolved substances move within the plants from where they are made. The source, for example leaves and storage organs, departs where they are required or stored. Sinks, such as buds, flowers, roots, fruits and storage organs. When sucrose reaches a sink, it is converted into starch for carbohydrate storage. The process of movement between these two areas is known as translocation and this occurs in the flowing vessels of the plant. The translocation of sugars and dissolved amino acids is an active process which means that energy is required to drive the process. If respiration is reduced or inhibited by respiratory toxins to the plant, translocation will be severely impaired, likely leading to the death of the plant. The mass flow hypothesis is the most widely accepted theory for the explanation of how solutes are transported from sources to sinks. Active transport is used to load solutes from companion cells into the sieve tube elements. This movement of ions and sucrose into the phloem results in reducing the water potential of the sieve tube elements. This results in movement of water from high to low concentration by osmosis. This results in an increase in hydrostatic pressure close to the source cells, creating a pressure gradient between the source and the sink cells, as there is a lower hydrostatic pressure in the cells nearer to the sink cells. This pressure gradient results in the movement of solutes down the pressure gradient to the sink cells. Removal of solutes into sink cells results in increasing water potential at the sink end, so water will move by osmosis into the xylem. This maintains the hydrostatic pressure gradient so that the process can continue. So this concludes this week's video on transportation in plants. I hope you enjoyed. We will see you next week when we will be learning about transport systems in mammals.